Hey guys, and welcome to another video. I can't believe I'm saying this, it's really weird um, to be like on YouTube, sorta, kinda. Yes, yeah, so my second video. I'm gonna be doing a fitness q and I asked you guys to ask me some fitness questions on Instagram, and I have them all written down on my phone right here. Fuck, my camera's flashing red. I should have charged this, fuck, okay. So, let's just get straight into it. Um. First one, what do you find most difficult about maintaining a healthy lifestyle? A what now? No, I'm kidding. A uh, healthy lifestyle, well, I mean, working out is definitely like the easiest part for me. Like, I enjoy training. I train six times a week. I think if, for me, like the hardest part is just sleeping enough. Like, cause I do a lot of things. I'm an overachiever. Like I spread myself way too thin and whatever. And that does take a toll on my sleep. And when you don't sleep enough, you don't really recover enough, things like that. So I guess, yeah, the most difficult is just getting enough sleep consistently. Um, next one. Nice ass. How much? Uh, DM me for details and inquiries. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should. Otherwise, you're a loser. Um, how many times a week do you need to lift weights to see results? This is very, very, like subjective and like context dependent depends on the muscle group depends on like how many times you want to go to the gym in general like how many times you can make it to the gym um i would say like well studies have shown that generally um training a muscle group twice per week is better than training it once a week um so i'd recommend hitting like each body part at least twice. So I recommend hitting um, each body part at least like twice a week. Um, and yeah. Are you going to compete in bodybuilding? I am not going to compete in bodybuilding. Not anytime soon at least. There are many reasons for this. Firstly, it's expensive as fuck. Like, I'm not saying that I have no money. Of course I do. But I'd rather save it up for like other things. Um, you know, I am a student as well. Like, I live in London. The rent here is quite expensive and stuff. So yeah um and like i feel like if i were to compete in bodybuilding i'd have to alter my training quite a lot like training in a way that i'd enjoy but less maybe like i wouldn't be able to train chest as much and i love to bench or like my chops are quite overdeveloped i wouldn't be able to deadlift as much and i love to deadlift things like that so i don't know and i think i'm still quite young i'm 19 i want to wait a few more years like for muscle maturity or whatever and then maybe I don't know we'll see I definitely would want to compete in the bikini category though that's for sure like not figure definitely bikini um next one how to prevent injuries especially after increasing weight well firstly regardless of like what weight you use make sure your warm-up is on point I would recommend increasing your core body temperature first so like a light five to ten minute warm up like on the stairmaster or like on the treadmill or whatever um so yeah that's the first thing warm up correctly warm up sets are really important as well like do two three warm up sets to make sure you're like um your body's like used to the movement pattern first you can't just like jump into your working rate straight away that's quite stupid and you will most likely get injured if you do uh, and then like when it comes to increasing weight, just make sure you're increasing it like in tiny increments, especially if you're quite advanced. Um, like if you add too much too quickly and you train like a fucking bro and you're like that shit light, well no that shit's fucking heavy <laughs> and you're gonna injure yourself. So yeah, progressive overload, like sure it's important to keep progressing, you know, lifting heavier and stuff, but as you become more and more advanced, like you can't progress linearly that quickly if that makes sense like some you're gonna have to auto regulate a little bit like some days you'll feel like shit you can't lift as much and that's completely fine it's about like listening to your body as cliche as that um as that sounds um how to start building your body when you don't have much money to spend on pt honestly the internet is like your best friend obviously you need to learn how to like weed out the bad information and I'd recommend just sticking to like the more scientific, like literature research, you know, um, and also just following. I'd recommend like following just people that are well known in the industry that know what they're talking about. Brett Contreras is amazing. Um, Jeff Nippard, I learned a lot from all of his videos. I'll link his YouTube in the description box below because I owe a lot of my knowledge to this guy. Honestly, 
he's amazing and his girlfriend Stephanie Buttermore as well like she's amazing so so intelligent amazing content both of them make really good content um so I'll link like my favorite YouTube channels and like Instagrams and stuff in the description because that's where I learned most of my my stuff and then like if like the whole PT thing would help you with motivation honestly the motivation has to come from within like you need to push yourself and discipline yourself um, when it comes to working out and last question what is the lowest amount of calories you would consume on a cut this depends again like the answer to most questions like it depends um, I don't have like a number a specific number I mean when I'm starting a cut I won't go too aggressive unless I'm doing a mini cut so I'll like take my maintenance calories and like subtract um, 10 to 15 percent um, to create like a small deficit and then once fat loss starts stalling once my metabolism has adapted depending on like how low my calories are I will either diet break or I will bring my calories down even lower or I will add cardio there's no like set number right now like off the back of my mind that would be like okay I'm gonna stop dieting now but like if I'm dieting and it's getting really really low I'll be like okay maybe diet break or maybe like reverse diet or something um, but yeah, I don't have like an exact number per se. Um, okay, and this last one, actually, they didn't ask this to me on like the Insta story, but like, um, this guy like DM'd me and he asked me, oh, like, so, you know, do you count, do you track everything you eat? Do you track your intake? I said, yes. I said, okay, but like, how do you track your expenditure? You know, there's no, like, how do you know what you're burning to know what you're consuming? And that's actually a really good question. Because, you know, we're always talking about maintenance calories, things like that, but there's no exact way of knowing exactly how much you expend. And then to lose fat, it's about calories in versus calories out, right? So how, how do we do this? Basically, you need to... Because sure, you have all these calculators online that'll calculate your total daily energy expenditure your TDEE um, and all that and that's all amazing and great and awesome and whatever but it's just like an estimate like it's never gonna be exactly like the number because all our bones are of different densities we don't have the same amount of muscle mass someone that weighs the same like they just ask for your age height and weight and stuff you know someone might be leaner but like you know weigh the same as someone else things like that and then obviously like genetically you're your metabolism, your BMRs can be different, it depends on genetics. So a good way to like estimate your expenditure really is by using yourself as an experiment and using like numbers and stuff like scientifically almost. So let's say you want to find out your maintenance calories. Um, obviously this is still going to be a rough estimate, but it's going to be a lot more accurate and specific to you than if you do this rather than like if you were to go off some calculator online and just use that. So. Let's say you're like tracking your intake every day, weighing yourself every day. Um, let's say you do this over the course of like two to four weeks. You average out the intake and you average out the weight. If your weight stays the same and your intake was like an average of, I'm saying anything right now, like 2,000 calories, then cool. You found your maintenance 2,000 calories at that specific activity level you were doing and that specific intake you were consuming. Nice. If you were gaining weight or losing weight, you'd have to do some math. Um, like, let's say, like, okay, just to make it really easy, if you ate 2,000 calories every day for a week and you lost exactly a pound in that week, a pound equates to a 3,500 calorie deficit. So if you lose a pound, it's 3,500 calorie deficit. Um, Divide that by seven for seven days in a week, and that means that you've been eating in a deficit of 500 calories every day. So your maintenance would be 2,500. You know, this is this is very like theoretical. Like, you know, there's so many other variables, but this is like the simplest way to do it, and the most accurate way to do it is like on yourself, um, like without using these calculators online because they don't know your body. If that makes sense. Of course, they're great for like a starting point. Let's say I have no idea how much I'm meant to eat, um, like calorie-wise, to maintain my weight. Cool. Use one of these calculators. Use that, but then like do the tracking thing where you track your weight, and yeah, just like take the results. You know, make it like a scientific experiment kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that was a really good question, and yeah, um, that's it for today's Q and A, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and then. 
one day we'll do like a personal kind of thing where like more about myself and stuff. I just want to do a fitness one first. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. It would make me really happy if you did. And please be sure to leave a comment down below of like what you think or what kind of videos I should be doing next. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.